everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Before we hear the old fellows tonight, I'm going to read a letter of special interest to light sleepers. It's from Mr. C.A.R. of Connellsville, Pennsylvania, and is quite typical of many we receive every week. He writes as follows. Thanks for the wonderful malted milk that you put on the market. It certainly does wonders for me in helping me sleep soundly. I've been in the habit of drinking coffee last thing at night and have been unable to get my proper sleep for several years. I was restless and dreamed all night. So after hearing Lum and Abner and about Horlick's malted milk, I thought I'd try some myself. Now, every night on retiring, I take a cup of Horlick's hot. And believe me, when I get up in the morning, I feel like a new man. I can't recommend Horlick's malted milk too highly to anyone who does not sleep properly at night. Well, thank you, Mr. C.A.R. We're glad you found Horlick's malted milk so useful in helping you sleep better. Thousands of others have also found it a grand inducement to sound restful sleep. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, Abner's swap idea certainly made a radical change in his business. Two weeks ago, he started trading merchandise in his store for animals. And now, Lum has gone into partnership with him. And they have a complete circus, which they expect to have ready for the grand opening next Saturday. <laughs> Squire Skimp, who has had previous experience in the circus business, has been employed as manager. And to cut down expenses, has asked Lum and Abner to take an active part in the performance. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum over at the circus grounds, inside the big tent practicing his trapeze act, while Squire Skimp looks on. Listen. How's this looking, Squire? Well, now, Lum, you can't learn how to be a high trapeze performer unless you get that swing higher than that off the ground. Well, I'd rather learn how down close to the ground this way, Squire. I get sort of dizzy-headed when I get up high that way. Well, that's the reason you ought to practice up high, then. Anybody can't just sit down on that bar and swing, Lum, that close to the ground. You, you, you don't think folks would enjoy seeing me do this, huh? Why, no, that ain't nothing. We could get a ten-year-old child to do that. They can see all that they want over there on the school ground. Yeah. You're supposed to be a high trapeze performer. Uh, don't reckon we could start something new, have a low trapeze performer. No, we? no, Lum. You're going to have to, you know, to jump off of one swing and turn a flip-flop and catch another and mm. hold by your teeth and all that. Ain't nothing hard to it. Uh, Squire, you better get somebody else for this job. Oh, now, Lum, ain't nothing to be scared of. Why, well, you'll catch on to it in a few days. You'll have that big net under you, so if you do happen to fall, why, it can't hurt you. Oh, I ain't scared. <laughs> no, that's just the trouble with me. I don't stop to think about the danger. Just uh, always was a terrible hand for taking chances that yeah. way. What I'm scared of, I might get up there and start doing a batch of stunts, and the crowd get to slapping their hands and nagging me on, and I'd pull such dangerous stunts that some of the women folks out in the audience might get high stage. Yeah, well, uh, Lum, let's pull this swing up a little bit higher now, and then see you try a few stunts. Uh, no, never mind. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to get down. I ain't going to stand for that. Uh, now, Lum, ain't nothing to be scared of. Uh, no, I tell you, Squire, I about made up my mind. We better get somebody else to do this trapeze. Well, we can hire lots of fellas to do it all right, Lum, but I was trying to get by on as little expense as we could. I had to hire a fella this morning to help us out around here. I guess I could let him do it, for he said that he's done trapeze work. Oh, he has. Yes, but I had so many other things for him to do, I don't believe he'll have time for it. Well, I can just trade jobs with him, then. Well, I'm afraid that you couldn't do all the things that he's supposed to do. Well, right? I'd do anything rather than to get up there on the top of this tent without nothing but a little swing to hold on to. Well, if you want to take over his job, well, it's all right with me. Uh, what all is he supposed to do? Well, he's a sword swaller. That's one of his sons. A uh, sword swaller. Yes, but now that don't take much time. I guess he could tend to that, too. Oh, sure he could. Yeah, I, I can't swallow no swords. No. Yeah, it oughtn't to take no time for him to run in the side shore there and swallow two or three swords. But now, I was just thinking, Lum, now he wouldn't have time. Now, Lum, you, you would just have to do his tricks with the elephant. With the elephant? Yes, uh, he wouldn't have time for that if he's going to be the trapeze performer. Mm, uh, them elephants ain't bad about biting a fella, either. Oh, no. Oh, elephants won't bite. <laughs> well, as long as I was in circus business, Lum, I never did hear of anybody being bit by elephants. 
Well, I don't know as I ever hear that, wouldn't No, no. Well, I believe you're talking about something there I can do, Spur. <laughs> I've always wanted to ride an elephant. Yes. They don't buck like a horse does. Oh, no, no, love. Why, it's quite an honor to ride the elephant. You see, you have to lead the parade, Lum. You set up there on the elephant uh, with a big crown on your head and a fancy uniform with gold braid all around on you. Sort of a king, huh? Well, yes, that's what you're supposed to represent, Lum, a king. Well, yes. why in the world didn't you make mention of this job sooner? <laughs> I guess I can tell you already, I'll take it, Squire. Uh, are you going to have one of them uh, sort of house-looking things setting up on top of the elephant for me to ride in? Oh, yes, yes. You'll be propped up in there, Lum, with big satin pillars, you know, and... Uh, have a couple of fellas uh, walking along beside you, supposed to represent slaves. Uh, uh-huh. They'll be carrying big fans made out of peacock feathers to fan you with while you march along, you know. Yeah, that's a time. I'm liable to get hot setting up in there. Good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I always felt I was cut out for the circus, all right, but I never know till now just what department I ought to get into. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, if you want that job, Lum, well, I'll tell this fella then that you'll take over the elephant act and uh, he can do the trapeze performance. Well, now, if he tries to argue with you about it, uh, just Tell him one of the circus owners is going to look after the elephants himself. <laughs> Just tell him that. Oh, well, I don't think I'll have no trouble with him, Lum, for he asked me for that trapeze job this morning, and uh, I told him that I'd already promised it to you. I, I know he'll be glad to make a change. Well, a crazy idiot. <laughs> How could anybody in their right mind rather have a job swinging on them trapezes up there in the top of the tent than to ride an elephant in the parade and have himself all dressed up like a king? <laughs> king Eddard. How does that sound? Well, now, uh, there's uh, more to this elephant act now, Lum, and just riding in the parade, you know. You See, you put on some tricks here in the tent during the main performance. Oh, they do, huh? Yes, uh, that'll be the feature of the show, you know. We'll have uh, trumpets blown, a big fanfare, and then you'll come riding out on one of the elephants with the other and uh, following along behind you, you know. Yeah, that's And then I'll get up and make a speech about you, and, uh, and uh, see, we'll have to get a good name for you, too, Lum. Yeah. Rum wouldn't do. Oh, no. What about King Edward? That ought to be. Yes, 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 that's just the thing. King Edward and his elephant. Yeah. And then uh, you put them through their tricks, you know. <laughs> Granny, I can't hardly wait. <laughs> Don't you reckon I better be riding that elephant around a little bit to sort of get used to him? Well, I reckon it wouldn't hurt nothing, though. Yeah, if I could get them slaves to go with me and them fans and all, I'd love to sort of drop by the schoolhouse during recess tomorrow. <laughs> Let Evelina see me. Yeah, she'd be proud to death of me. Well, now, I don't believe I'd be riding him around town none, Lum. It'll spoil the show, you know, but uh, you'll have to be practicing on them tricks anyway, you know. Yeah, what about them tricks? Well, now, when you get in the ring out there in the middle, Lum, I... Uh... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here comes Abner. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll bound you he'll throw a jelly spit whenever he finds out I'm going to be king of the circus and ride the elephants with them slaves walking along fanning me and all yeah, that. Well, I'm <laughs> sure glad he come over up. Uh... Maybe you could help me, Lum. I'm having a little trouble uh, getting Abner to be the line trainer. Uh, well, I- I'll help you talk him into it, Squire, but recollect now, you've done promised me that I could do the elephant act. Oh, yes, yes, that's yours, Lum, that's yours. If he wants it, you just tell him you think I'll do a heap better well, at it than howdy, he man. Well, howdy, Abner. Hello, Abner. Uh, where about you been all day? Uh, somebody store looking for you, Lum, and Grandpappy Spear said that you're over here. Yeah, I had to hire Grandpappy to run the store for me. I'm going to spend all my time with the circus now. Uh, Abner, what have you decided to do about training the cat? Well, now, to tell you the truth, Squire, I, I sort of lost the interest in them when I-, I found out that the cats were them lions and tigers. I thought you were talking about them two house cats at first. Well, Abner, it ain't going to be no trick to train them lines. Why, no, well, in fact, Abner, they're already trained. All we need is somebody to go in the cage there with them and put them through the tricks, you know. Why, sure, there ain't nothing to it. Yeah, that's just the part I don't like about it, too, that going in the cage with them. Uh, Squire was down there yesterday talking and want me to put my head in one of them tigers' mouths. In their mouth. Well, now, that won't be hard to do. It ain't no trouble to get your head in a tiger's mouth, Abner. No, I reckon not. That's just what I'm scared of. I ain't worried about getting it in there. Getting it out what I'm thinking about. Oh, well, it ain't going to bite you, Abner. That don't happen once in a lifetime. No, that's just it. Once is all that can happen. Well, what you got to do is go in there and look them in the eye and just let them know that you ain't feared of them. Yeah, but, Rob, I, I couldn't look no lion or tiger in the eye and ever make them believe any such thing as that now. They didn't know it wasn't so the minute I walked in that cage. Well, uh, you fellas talk this over, man. Uh, Rom, uh, I'll go see that feller about the trapeze performance, and uh, you talk to Abner here and see if you can't persuade him to change his mind about training the cat. Yeah, all right, Squire. Cat. Dog it, I wish he'd start calling them things by their right name. Now, Abner, you're just holding up the whole circus, just over your stubbornness. Very ideas of being feared of animals that way. 
Well, why don't you train a man if you're so brave? Well, I would, but this being king's going to take up all my time. King? King of what? Why, king of the circus. <laughs> I sort of hate to tell you about Abner, but Squire's done give me the job of putting the elephants through their tree. Ain't no use to ask him for it. He's done promised it to me. Oh, well, don't you worry. You can have it. He tried to get me to take that job yesterday, and I just told him that I never wanted it. Never wanted it? No, sir, I don't want no elephant laying down on me. Laying down on you? Yeah, them tricks that you've got to make them do. You've got to let that elephant pick you up in his trunk and wave you around the air for a few minutes over his head, and then he lays you down on the ground, and he lays down on top of you. No, sir, I don't want no part of that. No part. <laughs> well, there seems to be a drawback even to being king of the circus. <laughs> In the kitchen of the Mason home, Mrs. Mason and her friend Jane are about to prepare a midnight supper for their husbands after playing bridge. Listen. Wait a sec, Jane. I'll put the light on. There. Mmm, why, Madge, how nice. Oh, I like your kitchen. Do you? I'll say I do. That gas range especially. Is it new? About a month old now. Jack bought it for my birthday. He did? Mm Mm-hmm. Say, let's get Fred out here. If he sees you've got one. He might get you one, eh? (laughs) (laughs) I get it. Well, we'd better get him in a good mood first. Let's get supper, quick. Does Fred like coffee, Jane? Well, sure, he likes it. Yes. Well, don't improve. <laughs> How about some tea, then? No, he doesn't like tea. I don't suppose you happen to have any malted milk. Why, sure. But listen, Jane, I have no mixer. It takes me rather a long time. Nonsense, it doesn't take a second. Here, let me show you. Where's the powder? On that second shelf there. See? Horlick's malted milk, near the pickle. Oh, yes. I'm glad it's Horlick's. Now, where's your egg beater, Jane? Egg beater? Well, you can't use that. What do you mean, can't? You just watch. Now, you know, put the powder in. That's enough. Now, give me that. Why, Jane, that's marvelous. I never thought simple, isn't it? And twice as nice this way. Oh, boy, those men will go for this. Come on, let's take it in. I'll carry it. Yes, that's right. You bring in the sandwiches. And Madge is right, folks. Horlick's malted milk, or Horlick's with sandwiches, does make a fine party supper. It's delicious and refreshing, yet so easy to prepare. Try it on your friends. You can get Horlick's malted milk in either natural or chocolate flavor. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick, who now bid you all good night and good health. Good health.